Hi, in this video I'll show you how to set up a DJI RS2 Pro combo with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Uh, you can skip directly to the relevant sections uh, using the links below. During the installation I struggled a bit with the focus motor, while during the test I struggled a bit with the vibrations. So here it is. I just received the replacement for the previous DJI RS2 from Park Cameras as the previous one was faulty. This is not as a surprise because, I mean, uh, I've heard of multiple people having issues with uh, this gimbal and I believe there were issues with the tilt motor, but uh, I haven't received any feedback yet. Uh, so hopefully this one will be alright. So my suggestion is that you should never buy directly from DJI. Always buy from a retailer. I bought this uh, DJI from Park Cameras here in the UK and you can find similar retailers in the UK or USA, for example, CVP or BHP. And so the reason why you should never uh, deal with the DJI directly is because of the poor customer service. I mean, if you look at Trustpilot reviews, you can have uh, a better idea of uh, how the situation is. So this is a setup video that hopefully will guide you from uh, the unboxing through the installation of all accessories of the RS2 Pro combo until basic operations. My name is Sam and this is the first video I'm posting on this new YouTube uh, channel. If you think this is useful, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell and like and leave a comment below. So let's unpack this thing. The DJI RS2 has uh, three USB-C ports, the RSS camera control port, the Fox motor port, and the image transmission port. First attach the tripod to the BG30 grip. Ensure that the grip lever is unlocked. Mount the gimbal on the grip and lock the grip. Make sure the BG30 grip is fully charged. For that you'll need uh, a USB-C charging cable. So while we charge the battery, we can work on the other gimbal components. The gimbal comes folded and locked. There are three locks, tilt, roll, and pan lock. Unlock them and place the gimbal in the right position. Then lock them again. Don't power the gimbal when it's locked or when it doesn't have any camera mounted on it. We need to make sure the camera is ready with all accessories mounted on it. Here we have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and we're going to mount a tilt a half cage and a CCTEC CFast card adapter with the 1TB SSD card in it. We're also going to mount a battery pack which mounts Sony batteries. You can find the links for these three items in the description below. In the RS2 Pro Combo box, you'll find three plates. The lower quick release plate, which mounts directly on the RS2, and the two upper quick release plates. The lower quick release plate is compatible with the Manfrotto standard, meaning that you could get another one of these and mount it on your uh, tripod to switch uh, the camera from the gimbal to a tripod. We will be using the upper quick release plate compatible with the Ronin Focus motor, which is included in this uh, DJI RS2 Pro Combo package. Attach the quick release plate to the camera by tightening the bottom screw. Mount the lower quick release plate on the gimbal and lock it. Insert the camera on the lower quick release plate and uh, make sure it's roughly balanced. The issue with the focus motor is due to the fact that uh, the tilt cage brings the camera up. So if you want to mount the focus motor system on the DJI quick release plate, the focus motor won't be able to touch the focus gear on the lens. So it might work with uh, different lenses. Uh, maybe if you mount a Canon lens plus uh, an MTF adapter instead of an MTF uh, lens, maybe the focus motor might be able to touch the focus gear. So I've mounted the focus system directly on the tilt cage However, I could only mount uh, one DJI screw. I had to order a set of uh, M4 20mm screws. Uh, you can use these screws to mount the focus motor system directly on the tilt half cage. So these are the kind of screws I got. The screws. Just got a 
bunch of them here. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. Take a multi-camera control cable USB-C and uh, connect the camera USB-C port to the RSS camera control port, which is the first port. Because this lens doesn't have a focus gear, we're going to mount the focus gear provided in the box. We might need to adjust this uh, later. So attach the focus motor to the 12mm rod and tighten the knob. Connect the focus motor to the focus motor port, which is the second port, using the provided multi-camera control cable, which is a 30cm USB-C cable. In this case, there is no need to mount the lens fastening strap, because this lens is relatively small and lightweight. However, we are going to mount this uh, anyways. So the lens fastening strap is uh, required when uh, using the super smooth mode. In terms of power, the power adapter I'm using works perfectly well, uh, with the full charge, the internal LPE6 battery and the Sony NPF570. I got something like 1 hour and 36 minutes of uh, continuous recording in row 3 to 1 in the CCTech CFast. What you can do is that you can uh, get a bunch of the Sony batteries and then replace them as soon as uh, they die. So these are the kind of, these are the batteries I got. Uh, I got, just got two of them today. They cost about uh, 10 pounds each on Amazon, so they are very cheap. Another thing I noticed is that uh, closing the camera door isn't good for the CFast adapter cable. So just leave it open. And that's what I did here. If you look here, it's, uh, it's open. So just keep it open. This is the CC Tech adapter. Mount the briefcase uh, handle. Mount the phone holder. The DJI Raven image transmitter allows you to remotely receive a camera live view, control the gimbal and use active track. Mount the Raven Eye to the cold shoe port on the gimbal camera mounting plate. Uh, the antenna should point uh, away from the tilt motor. Connect the HDMI cable to the Raven Eye and the camera. Connect the Raven Eye to the third USB port of the gimbal. Press and hold the power button on the Raven Eye to power it on. Uh, you should balance the gimbal only after uh, everything has been mounted. Balancing is essential for uh, proper operation and to avoid the motor struggling and overheating. Make sure the gimbal is powered off when we are doing this. And make sure all accessories are mounted on the camera. If you add or remove anything to the camera, you'll need to rebalance the gimbal. Balancing is done in four steps. So make sure you follow this exact order. First, we balance the vertical tilt. So unlock the tilt axis while keeping the other axis locked, then loosen the mounting plate knob. If the lens leans forward, it's top heavy, so move it back. If the lens leans backward, it's bottom heavy, so move it forward. The vertical tilt is balanced when the camera is steady while pointing upwards. Tighten the plate knob. Second, we balance the depth of the tilt axis. This is easy. Unlock, balance, unlock. Third, we balance the roll axis. Unlock the roll axis, balance, unlock. Fourth, we balance the pan axis. Unlock the pan axis, balance, and lock. The gimbal is balanced when, uh, no matter how you orient the camera, the camera stays where you put it. Before you power up the gimbal, make sure the three axes are unlocked. Press and hold the power button to power the gimbal. Now we're going to connect the gimbal to the mobile app. Download the Ronin app from your Android or uh, Apple device. If you don't have a DJI account, uh, create one. Turn on Bluetooth from your mobile and select DJI RS2. And uh, input the default password 12345678 and follow the instructions.
Next, auto-tune the gimbal from the touch screen. In theory, you could immediately use the gimbal. We are going to do some checks to see if the motors are working well. The Raven-I allows you to transmit uh, the HDMI signal from the camera to your phone via Wi-Fi. Uh, the app uh, has uh, interesting monitoring functionalities and uh, you can also use it to control the gimbal motors remotely. So launch the Ronin app, tap the image transmission icon in the bottom of the settings page. Connect to the Raven Wi-Fi using the password on the Raven. According to the DJI website, the RS2 is compatible with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the following controls are available. Start and stop recording. Pull focus electronically. Trigger autofocus. ISO. And aperture. Now, the main reason why I got this gimbal was the tracking feature, but uh, also for the LiDAR model, which I haven't received yet. Uh, you can access the tracking feature from the gimbal or from the app. Swipe down the touch screen to enter the camera view on the gimbal. Then make sure a subject or an object is at the center of the frame and then press trigger once to start active track. You might want to adjust the tracking speed. Uh, use low speed for uh, smoother results. You can also use active track from the Ronin app. So enter the camera view in the app, drag a box around the subject and start tracking. During tracking you can also adjust the subject position in the frame. Which is particularly useful, especially when uh, you, you use the grids. Now that we have verified that the system works, the following is a series of manual controls that you might find useful. So press the trigger twice to reset the gimbal position. Press three times for selfie mode. Focus can be controlled from the front dial. Press and hold the trigger to enter lock mode. In this mode the camera faces the same direction no matter where you move. Press and hold the M button to enter sport mode. If you need to remain in sport mode, press trigger twice while holding the M button. You can repeat the same combination to exit. Press M twice to enter portrait mode. Press twice to exit portrait mode. Press M three times to enter the 3D roll 360. Repeat to exit uh, 3D Roll 360. So here are some tests I did in the park. In terms of usability it works uh, pretty well. Active tracking worked uh, quite well, but I've had issues with the vibrations when I was uh, walking. The system weight is uh, 3.8 kilos or uh, 8.4 pounds. Uh, you might uh, be more comfortable wearing a Steadicam vest, but in my case it was fine. This is an example of active tracking. I did set the active uh, track speed to a very low value, 9. I did run behind a small tree and uh, two people and, uh, and it kept tracking me. Then for some reason, here it got confused. So I tried again, running at uh, different speeds, and it worked fine. So once again, this is a Micro Four Thirds uh, lens, a 45mm lens, mounted on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So tracking might be easier with a shorter lens, for example, with this one, uh, which is a 16mm uh, lens, uh, Micro Four Thirds from uh, DJI, it's the one I had uh, mounted on the Inspire One drone. So here I tried to active track this lady, still lots of vibrations, I haven't turned the uh, super smooth on yet. Here I'm just walking, lots of vibrations. Here I turned on uh, the super smooth mode. Here I tried the tracking again, trying to go behind the tree, and the active tracker lost me.
Here I'm working with the super smooth tone. Here I try to run. So I might have the settings wrong. In fact, the, the gimbal is vibrating a lot. Super smooth doesn't seem to do anything, to be honest. The horizon is fine here. And here I try to track this couple with the black dog. When I try to walk, active track worked well, but as you can see, there are lots of vibrations. Here I was walking while uh, tracking the bridge, so again, absolutely rubbish. So all these tests were done with the default uh, stiffness, follow speed and the uh, dead band settings. I might need to adjust uh, the stiffness uh, to fix vibrations even though auto-tune is supposed to do the job automatically. So I hope this is not another defective uh, DJI RS2. So I hope this uh, short guide for the setup of a DJI RS2 Pro combo with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera was useful. If you found this useful, please uh, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.